Hey guys, I am on Mount Islip and I'm going to show you how to hike to Mount Islip from Crystal Lake. Now there's a few ways to get up here to Mount Islip. Uh, a lot of good trails in the area. This is one of my favorite loop trails. It's, uh, it's a little over 10 miles or so. It's got a decent amount of climbing. But there's not a ton of people on this hike, so it's nice if you kind of want to get away from the crowds or avoid trails that are, um, you know, a little more popular. And when you get up here, there's great prominence up on the peak. You can see down into LA, there's Twin Peaks, Waterman, down into the Mojave, Baden-Powell in the distance. So uh, if you want to do the hike, just go to hikingguy.com. I have the maps and all the info you need to do it. But otherwise, you can watch these turn by turns, and I will show you each twist and turn of the trail. So let's go. So there's trailhead parking um, for Crystal Lake here. Now there's the Crystal Lake campground, and there's the trailhead. So just go to the website, and I'll show you kind of where they all are spatially. But when you leave the parking lot, you're just going to go up through this gate here up to the left. And there's a little climb. And eventually when you get to the top of this little climb, climb's a strong word, little hill, you'll uh, come out at Crystal Lake, which will be over to your left over here. Now, not quite crystal, but uh, more like a lagoon, black lagoon. And you're going to just walk around the lake. So you're going to be going around in a counterclockwise direction along the shores of the lake. And it's nice just to walk around and check the lake out. It is a pretty place and it's peaceful. There's these stairs up to the right here. We're going to keep going straight. This area here was once a beach. And you can kind of imagine what it was like back in the day as a recreation spot. But keep going along the path along the shoreline here. And you're going to see all these toads here. Now, I see these almost every time I'm here. These are California toads. You see them on the ground there. And you can see the trail goes all around the lake here. And you're just going to keep going straight until you're about 80% around the lake. And when you're about 80% around, the trail is going to bear off to the right. And the way it works is you're going to kind of go up the hill to the right. You're going to bear right and then you're going to come back along the south side of the lake but you'll just be a little bit higher up when you look at the map it'll make more sense but you're just going to go up this hill bear to the right and then you can see the lake down there to the right and you're going to go back up along the top there's the lake keep going straight here and you can see the trail it's not a major trail but it is easy to follow and just keep going straight and when you get to the end of the lake the trail goes up to the left and you're going to start the climb now this trail is called the um, Islip Wawona Trail but it's also called the Islip Ridge Trail so if you see uh, see both names on a map you're in the same place and you're going to keep hiking straight up and there's switchbacks here and you're going to start the climb. You're going to be able to see Crystal Lake down in the distance as you climb up here. And the trail's straightforward, easy to follow, and uh, well-maintained. You can see here it's, it's in good shape. You can also see there's not any huge trees, and the trees you do see are sort of burned. This area was sort of devastated in the 2002 Curve Fire actually just opened up in 2011 but it is back now and you can hike on all the trails and you'll see you're going to keep on climbing up here you can see some of the devastation from the fire here and eventually you're going to reach the ridge line and from here the trail follows the ridge all the way up to mount islip and there's some great views as you go up some views down um, to mount waterman Twin Peaks, and you're just going to keep heading up this ridgeline area here, South Mount Hawkins, Mount Hawkins over there straight ahead to the right on the other side of the valley, and here's some more of those great views. This is one of my favorite parts of the trail as you go up along here. It does go straight up the ridgeline. There are some small switchbacks as you go, but it's uh, it's all doable if you have a decent level of fitness and if you're used to climbing the, the mountains here. There's nothing really, really steep here. You're going to keep climbing up along the 
western part of the ridge and again great views Mount Waterman in the distance that's a nice hike too if you want to do Mount Waterman and Twin Peaks I have a guide for that on the website but otherwise keep on going straight and it's not all of a climb here there are some gradual flat sections as you climb up here like this when you get to this point you're gonna see Mount Islip in the distance it's up ahead there and uh, you'll know you're getting close when you start to see it here. And you're going to keep going straight. You're going to get to this intersection with the Big Sienga Trail, which will be down to your right. Well marked. All these trails are really well marked, but we're going to head up to the left. There you can see the trail down there. Up to the left towards Mount Islip. And you can see it. It's the bump in the distance there. That is where we're going. You can also see the trail is kind of flat in this section. Now there's other ways to get to Mount Islip. This is just one of my favorite um, routes, but you can go on a shorter route from Angeles Crest Highway. Uh, that's a pretty straightforward hike straight up the Mount Islip Trail. But on this way, you're going to go up here, and you're going to see this little spur up to the summit. And you're going to make the hard left and head up to the summit from here. And again, look at the views. It's pretty incredible, as are the views from the summit. And after a short while, you're going to come to the ruins of the old um, watchkeeper's hut, which is right here. Now, there used to be a fire tower on the summit here from 1928 to 1938, and that's where the guy who worked in it lived sometimes with his family. And uh, I have some old pictures of it on the website if you want to check it out. And when you get up to the summit, you're going to see the um, foundations of the old fire tower, which was up here. It was actually moved to South Mount Hawkins in uh, 1938, and then it burned down in the Kerr fire of 2002. And when you get up here, you're going to be able to see everywhere from Mount Baldy to the Mojave, Mount Lukens, uh, the views are pretty awesome. When you've had your fill, you're going to go back down that spur, back down to the Mount Islip, um, Islip Ridge Trail. You can see there's a sign there. And now we're going to head down towards Windy Gap, which will be our next kind of landmark on the hike. And from here on out, you have descents, which is nice. And if you look down there, you can see Crystal Lake. I have a picture on the website. It kind of points it out better. But you'll be able to see it in the distance there, along with the route that you came up along the ridge. So keep on heading downhill here. You can see it's a nice cruisy trail. And when you get to this trail junction, we're going to make the hard right to head, door, head down towards Windy Gap. And just a short while after that turn that you'll see Windy Gap down there in the distance. When you get to Windy Gap, um, there are several trails here. Sorry for the shake, it's only on this clip. I had a little equipment failure. If you went straight here, you'd be on the PCT and you would go to Baden-Powell. But we're going to make the right onto the Windy Gap Trail and head back down towards Crystal Lake. And from here on out, the signs will say Crystal Lake or Crystal Lake Campground, um, which is where we're going eventually. And this, uh, Part of the descent is nice and cruisy as well. There's some really nice long switchbacks. You're gonna go back and forth. You'll see Mount Islip up there in the distance as you descend, and uh, it's definitely easy to follow. Here you're gonna pass the intersection with the Big Sienga Trail again. So we passed this earlier when we're up on the ridge. If you want to go back to the ridge, you could just go right up here. But we're gonna go straight. And shortly after this, there's another big intersection and again, it's well marked. And we're gonna bear right here and head down toward Deer Flats Campground. And there's a bunch of trails as we get closer to the campground areas. They're all well marked with signs, as you can see, um, but it can get a little confusing. And also a note, if you're using open street maps, there's a ton of trails on open street maps. They're not all the same now. I think some of them have been rerouted um, after the fire. 
and you're going to head down towards Deer Flats. It's sort of an old road at points and it gets a little more primitive, but it's definitely easy to follow as you go. And eventually you will come out at this gate and the Deer Flat campgrounds. There are bathrooms here in case you need them. And there's some campgrounds over to the right. We're going to kind of stay to the left and go straight. And we're going to go down this little paved road. It's just a short while on the paved road. We'll pass the bathrooms over here and keep going straight on this paved section. It's always pretty deserted here too. Don't expect to see a ton of campers. Maybe in the high season, the summer you get more, but I almost never see them. Now here's the turn for the Lost Ridge Trail. We're going to make the right here. And it's a little bit tricky to find the actual trail. There is a sign there. You're just going to go straight across this lot and the trail will be off to the left here. Now this trail is pretty primitive. Um, it's well marked. It's easy to follow. It can get a little bit overgrown at times. But you can see here it's a, not so hard to follow the trail down. And we're going to basically be taking this all the way back to the trailhead. And shortly after you start, you'll see the road up to your left there. It follows the road for a little bit and then heads down to the right into the canyon there. And again, pretty easy to follow as you head on down here. There are sections where it'll get a little, a little overgrown. But just keep on heading down. At this junction, we're going to make the right and head on down here. You're going to start to see the road, that loop road, down to your left as we go down here. It'll kind of join the trail as you hike down. There it is. We're going to hike above it for a little while. And after a few minutes above it, we're going to get kind of spit out onto it, onto the paved section. You can see it here. We're going to cross the paved section. This is the Crystal Lake campground down to your um, down to your right there. But we're just going to go out onto the road here on the left, go straight. And after a few minutes on the paved trail, you're going to get back to the trailhead, which is right here where he started. So that's the hike. It's a fun one. Definitely give it a try. And if you do it, just go to hikingguy.com. I have the GPX, the maps, everything else in addition to the video that you would need to do the hike. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, if you could do me a big solid and just click that little thumbs up button, that will help other people find this video and hopefully do the hike safely. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, go to the website, subscribe to my email, Facebook, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And I'll let you know when I have new guides coming out, whether they're hike guides or gear that I find useful or whatever it might be. So stay in touch, and uh, hopefully I'll see you out on the trails one day. All right, see you guys.